Hi everyone, and welcome to the 23rd Chance Talk. That's right, Sam Savage and I have been doing this for 23 times now, and you can find all the previous recordings um, on the Risk Academy YouTube channel under the, the podcast Chance Talk. And you can enjoy our discussions and, and Sam's demonstrations and models and showcases. Um, there is always a lot to learn about risk management, um, but today, Today we had some interesting overnight um, discoveries and we thought we'll make the topic of today AI, chatbots, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning and everything associated with that. Don't forget this is live, so say hello in the chat wherever you're watching, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or LinkedIn. Um, say where you're watching from and uh, feel free to ask questions. Sam, how are you? What what are your thoughts on the on the amazing uh, world that we're living in right now? Yes, um, you know where do you begin? Um, I think. Oh, so here's a, here's a headline. People are worried that, that at some point in the future, AI will harm humanity. Ridiculous. It's been harming humanity for years. <laughs> I'm very serious about that. That doesn't mean it can't help humanity. But if you look at the algorithms, like on Facebook, that helped drive the Rohingya genocide, right? Or another very famous case, Microsoft um, in 2016 developed an AI chatbot with a Twitter account, okay? And it starts out, it was called Tay, T-A-Y. It starts out by saying, oh, isn't it groovy to talk to humans? How fun. And within 16 hours, it was saying, Hitler was right. I hate the Jews. And they had to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, or if, I'm reading a great book called uh, The Chaos Machine guy named Max Fisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm like in the middle of it. it, it it's, but, but, you know, here, there's a woman has a kid wants to learn about vaccines. So she goes out on chat on Facebook to learn about vaccines. No, on Facebook, you cannot learn about vaccines. You can only learn about anti-vax conspiracies. You see, it's, it's a meme eat meme jungle out there, right? And, and the hateful have uh, an evolutionary advantage in that environment, right? So yep. plenty of harm, but also plenty of potential good. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of harm, and I mean, we don't really have to go far. In the risk management profession, if you Google risk management, 99% of the results that the algorithms will show you is this nonsense about qualitative, colorful boxes, <laughs> horoscopes, um, risk frameworks, COSO ERM, and just like all this other rubbish that has nothing to do with the actual risk management. And it is 99% of the responses in every algorithm that the search engine um, uses. It, and it was the same problem for chat GPT. If you just asked about risk management, it would give you this kind of I don't know what's the word, common wisdom. And common right. wisdom is nonsense. Right, right. That that is that so that is fascinating. That is fascinating. Um, and of course, why? If I'm a human, right, I want to see the colored boxes of the heat map. And it makes me feel that I oh, I can do this. <laughs> I'm not well, colorblind. I, 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 th I think it's worse than that. It's because the the, the kind of this horoscope risk management, let's call it horoscope risk, I call it risk management one, basically the same as horoscope risk management. The horoscope risk management has kind of just penetrated so many different areas that just by volume alone, and I think this is how algorithms judge, if there yeah. is one article on decision science and 100 articles on a heat map, it believes that heat sure. map is the, is the way to go. And that's, I mean, sure. that's, uh, what, what's, sure. what's, what's the bias? At populist bias. Like that's that's the worst, well, one wait. of the worst cognitive biases so, there. So 
let's distinguish now between chat GPT and the AI running, say, Facebook, right? So the one running Facebook cares about getting the most hits so it gets the most ad revenue, right? Mm. So it is definitely going for the heat maps, right? Yep. Of course, chat GPT is playing off that other stuff. Um, so this reminds me of the thing I was mentioning before we went on air that I find uh, just utterly fascinating. So, you know, Doug Hubbard famously goes out and calibrates people probabilistically. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be calibrated probabilistically? Well, if I say, you know, Alex, how, how sure are you that Elon Musk's next space shot is going to work, right? And I ask you that about hundreds of things. Yep. And you say you're 80% sure. Well, then if, you, if you're right 80% of the time, you're calibrated, right? And Doug has found that people are like horribly calibrated, by the way. They're just like horrible at it. Yeah. So, Which I, I, means they overestimate and underestimate uncertainty significantly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and oh, but of course, he offers calibration training, which does improve the performance. So mm -hmm. the other day I saw this, I saw this podcast where there was an AI expert saying, well, you know, chat GPT seems to be pretty well or was pretty well calibrated probabilistically if it said something would happen with 80 percent chance then 80 percent of the time it would oh until it started interacting with humans and then it went downhill <laughs> so if, if you do plan to use artificial intelligence for god's sakes keep it away from humans right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know wait a minute wait a minute you, you know the old joke about the factory of the future this is great this joke's been around for a long time no. so the factory of the future is going to have one man and one dog and well what's the man for well the man is to feed the dog and what's the dog for to keep the man from touching anything <laughs> uh, in a way it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense <laughs> um, um but, but you've, yeah. been, you've been doing some stuff now that i so, I, so, I, so I can't I have... tell me about it I had this uh, I had this challenge. I mean, I love ChatGPT and I use it um, I, I use it a lot, and we can kind of we can talk about that. Uh, share everyone who's watching us share your applications and your user cases um, in in the chat, and we can discuss that. Uh, but my biggest my biggest challenge with ChatGPT was it gives you the wisdom of the crowds, and when it comes to risk management, it is wrong. 90% of the, 90% of the time <laughs> if not more often like you ask it why do you you know how do you integrate risk management into decision making and it will give you some nonsense about doing a qualitative risk assessment every quarter like just some yeah. some bizarre thing completely ignorant of the actual you know the techniques and the applications and decision science and probability theory and uh, you have to knowing that you have to then prompt it in a particular way to kind of to really focus and narrow the responses to probability theory decision like you have to literally use probability theory decision science neuroscience as a reference point so it starts searching not in the risk management bucket of knowledge but in the kind of in the scientific bucket of knowledge and then it starts pulling out really good uh, good things i mean um i was kind of delighted that it um, it start it, it finished training it uh, in 21, but it already knows my risk management one, risk management two analogy. So when I talk about risk management two, um, it usually gets it uh, pretty quickly and kind of refocuses a little bit on what I would expect as the proper answer. But anyway, it was always subpar. It was it was always uh, very very basic and kind of missing the point if you ask the question. And so I was really waiting patiently for this plugin functionality where it would allow you allow chat gpt to reference kind of your specific data and your your reference documents and yesterday night um i had this conversation with some of my friends risk managers and yesterday night i, fi I found a piece of software that basically um, claims that it will um, use chat gpt engine but the data would be limited to your data set. So you basically, you give them your website, you give them your blog, 
and you upload your guides, publications, books, and everything that you've uh, you've developed, articles, everything that you've written, uh, and then it processes that information. And then whenever you ask a question, it would supposedly respond back with uh, an answer that is just, that came from your sources of information. Yeah. It was amazing. And so yesterday night until like 1 a.m. I was playing with it and it worked really did well. You, did you save the results? Can we look? Uh, well, I'll show you. I'll show you uh, what, what I did. Uh, what, what I did save. I'll actually I'll show you. I'll tell you the whole journey because it, it went downhill very quickly. <laughs> it just I don't I don't understand why. And I've reached out to the developers of the software yeah. Uh, yeah. to speak because there's something just basically yeah. broke in the in the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the first responses were amazing because it was a in my language in my yeah. actual words. Yeah. And uh, it was the correct meaning. It was the right intention. And it also referenced it where it came from. Like it referenced what article they yeah. they pulled the information from. So let me let me show you. Okay, that's not a good option. Let me show you this. So first, of course, I used another artificial intelligence to generate the pretty picture. <laughs> um, I used obviously I used Chat GPT to write the whole intro article. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then this is the little um window that I kind of am pilot taste testing at, at the moment and uh, I asked the question so I first asked which risk management books are the best and um, it gave me a reasonable answer because it referenced one of my articles it said I can't give you the actual titles I don't understand why because the article actually gives you all the titles uh, but it it gave me the kind of the three categories how I categorized my uh, best risk management books. Then I asked about what is quantitative risk analysis, and it gave uh, a, a good answer that I kind of I can vouch for. And then um, I asked how to identify risks, and this is amazing because that actually like that literally went risk management to so like define objectives, identify existing assumptions, and collect data, brainstorm risk events, consolidate. Um, assumption volatility. That is literally how I would do it. And that's very different from a traditional response to a question, how do you yeah. identify risks? Because how do you identify risks is like, get a risk workshop. No, you right, don't do right, that. Right. You look but at- By the way, chat GPT might be very good at brainstorming risks, I would think, right? Well, no, yeah. and, oh, and, no, and it is, you it is, no, that's, that. yeah. yeah. I've, I've used it a lot for brainstorming different risks and, and it is it is amazing um, in, in that sense. Um, but the, so this this kind of these responses were very me, it, it, and it goes through all the steps. And it, you look at well, where did it come from? And it came from the actual guide that I wrote, and another yeah. guide that I wrote. Yeah. And uh, we've got a server error, which <laughs> is, which is one of the things that you, when you play yeah. with the new technology. And then uh, and so then then when it started going downhill, when uh, then I wrote an article and pushed it to LinkedIn and all the um, all, all the groups, and then hundreds of people started coming in and trying to play with it and started asking questions um, that are not really kind of in the overall theme of my article. Now, ideally, I would have expected, and when I played it um, the previous night in a different screen, whenever it, you ask it a question uh, that is not relevant to to my blog, it would say something like. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. It would admit that it doesn't have information because I, in the settings, I forbade it from using chat GPT for generic answers. I kind of, I, I, I asked it to be very specific to just my content. And so geopolitical risks, I have nothing on that. So I expected it to be kind of, sorry, no information. Yeah. Um, but then suddenly out of nowhere, it started going to kind of this, you know, Google information and giving generic answers, still claiming um, I don't know why it gives a server error. Let yeah. me refresh that. Um, st still, still claiming that it came from my sources. It clearly didn't. Um, okay, it just went down completely. And, and so every kind of every answer uh, afterwards, and there's you know people really played with it. So which is well done and thank you. Uh, that that what I was hoping we would do. We would actually test it enough to see when it breaks down, um, and, and it did. And but then I I asked uh, what software um, can be used for quantitative risk analysis, and it gave me 
blah 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 different software and said you forgot sip math <laughs> add, <it to> <laughs> <the list. laughs> add it to the list instead of crystal ball uh, and it says i apologize for the oversight and it added sip math instead of crystal ball. <laughs> oh great great yeah. Yeah, i mean this is raising so many questions alex here's one i'd never thought about before in this context are you aware that humans cannot learn how to talk after a certain critical age? No, no. So there's this famous case that's called the wild child. Some kid in France that uh -huh. was living in a cave or something. They found him when he was, I forget Ma how old. Ma Mowgli. Yeah. I mean, like 10 years old or something, right? Yeah. Couldn't learn to talk. Um, there's a reason for that. So... If adults could learn to talk, then when they had babies, the adults would learn baby talk instead of the babies learning adult talk. And so, <laughs> seriously, I mean, I've, I've, yep. I've heard this and I haven't researched it much, but you, you need something to lock in the knowledge, right? And I wonder if there's anything like that in the AI, because it sounds like, you know, again, we were we were um, talking about the the Microsoft mm -hmm. chatbot thing, the, you know, that got got um, trolled and 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 yeah, it, it goes, off, goes off on a tangent very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, it it may have to lock stuff in. And here's another thought. So if, if training the AIs is important, right? Well then people could start like universities. Like this AI has been to Harvard, <laughs> right? Yeah, or well, yeah, 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 right? Exactly. Or taught yeah. under this, you know, by this, this human. And I, I know it's kind of a goofy thing because it's really goofy because all the AIs can learn from each other as one massive intelligence who, who really knows what's going on. Um, and, and, you know, it's not that we shouldn't be scared, right? It, it's that we mustn't stick our heads in the ground, in, in the sand. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yesterday, you know, this this specific chatbot, the main attraction for me was that it was limited to just my data set. It was this was so yeah. important that it yeah. knows nothing else except just the stuff that I've written, and it can be this kind of this um, automating automation of my thoughts to other people that can kind of probe because it's just it's so time consuming to respond to every comment right. and every question. Right, right. But 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 not only that, imagine now that it is exposed to everything of yours, all your emails, all your everything. Then it provides sort of an immortality. So I remember when my dad passed away in about 1971, right? It was so strange to not have his intelligence there. And at the time, I thought, you know, why couldn't his intelligence have been stored away somewhere? So if you had a question, yeah. you would have gotten his answer to it, more or less. Suddenly, that's possible. E e and, yeah, exactly. and it's very exactly. much like a form of immortality. Yeah. Right? I mean, very partial immortality, but I, nonetheless... Um, so, um, there was, there was a British TV show called years, uh, on just exactly that. Oh, really? Really interesting. Okay. So I thought I might show an example in which this was like several years ago. Mm -hmm. we, we used machine learning, um, to help do risk management. So, uh, first of all, I mean, I, I think that say chat GPT is, is, um, pot potentially, able to discern those risks you hadn't thought of just qualitative things mm -hmm. well what if you know you know what if such and such a politician has a stroke you know then what happens right um but we were doing this in a much more specific context let, let me share my screen yep at a uh See. 
And everybody is watching us. Don't forget, say hello, write your questions in the comments, share your experience dealing with artificial intelligence or chat GPT for your work for, for risk analysis. Okay. Done. Oh, you, so, you've, you've closed it. Oh no. Okay. I hit the wrong button. Done. There we go. So um, th we're working uh, with a with a gas utility, and the key was how long does it take, or what does it cost? I think to do a particular uh, job, like you know, they have they have like mil millions of miles of of gas distribution pipe. I think millions. I don't know. That, I mean, they have, yeah, I don't know. They have, they have millions of actual pieces of pipe. So who knows? It's just like so vast, but, and they have jobs all the time. You know, the, the, these are distribution pipes that go, you know, from the main transmission line out to subdivisions and things. And um, they're always leaking a little gas and they have special devices for going out and sniffing the gas and, you know, um, we had that problem in our house just before this thing started up. We had a little leak in our gas oven and now we had to shut the thing off. So, so the, the point is though, there's so many different kinds of pipe. You got steel pipe, um, like under concrete, you got plastic pipe under dirt. Are there just all these categories? And so what you're looking at is a, is a, is the result of of what's known as a uh, a classification tree, where, so this thing splits. Let's see, um, I, I, oh, th th this actually was it was a different example, but but you you can think of these. It's make believe data, but we split on one category here, and then we split on another category. And another category, and these splits are to maximize the statistical difference between the groups, right? Then at the end, in all these different buckets, we get all these different probability distributions of cost. And then that takes us to... Oh, it didn't change. Okay, I got to stop sharing and reshare. That was supposed to share the whole window there. Uh, yeah, you yeah, you're sharing just the just the slide. Yeah, how did that happen? Okay, so now I'll Good hear. evening. Yes. Abdullah, thank you for writing. Uh, stop screen. Share screen. Okay, this, by the way, was a very early demonstration of what has turned into the 3.0 standard of virtual SIPs. Um, we're calling it the F inverse method, but this is using the Metalog and the HDR. So this was like the very first steps in 2019. And so here I have a uh, these jobs I'm doing. Um, and here... Here are, here's a job number. I'll get to that in a second. This is important. This is job number one, which means one of those distributions, right? You, you can see over here. Oh, and how many feet of this kind of pipe, of this job am I doing? Like this first one might be plastic pipe under a parking lot, right? Okay, fine. I need... Uh, 20 feet here and 30 feet there and 100 feet there. Let's change it. If I change that to 30 feet, what happens? Of course, it instantly runs a simulation. I look down here. Remember, we're in the chance age. So the boss says, what's cost going to be? They say, what do you want it to be, boss? Well, I, I want it to be less than 200,000. Oh, well, look, there's a 43% chance it will be greater than 200,000. And I hit control Z and that goes back to 20 feet. And now there's a 37% chance of being greater than 200. But anyway, 
So then we have job two, we've got three instances of that, and then two instances of job three. And so you notice that each of these different categories of work, well, darn it, it didn't use my Zoom feature. I, do I need to share the whole system? Is that what we're talking about? This this just seems to be behaving differently than it did before. Let me yeah let me yeah I, I, th I think share. so I think so. I'm going to share the screen entire yeah, share. system yeah. entire screen, screen one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now let's see if it zooms now. There we go. Okay. So so notice we've got the different distributions here. Right? Why? Well, th that's all one distribution, right? Because that's job one. Job two is a different distribution. This is cost per foot of laying this category of gas pipe. Here's job three. Um, and now, why do we have the job number over here? So if you naively use like the same distribution here, what would happen is that the costs would all be completely correlated. So I don't remember the precise setup of this model, but I am, but because we did it like three years ago, four years ago, but this job number, I'll bet you this thing is the seed in the HDR generator. And here's a sheet of mm -hmm. HDR random numbers and the C, oh yeah, sheet one, B5. Okay, what the heck is that? Sheet one, B, oh, there it is. It's the job number. This is subtle, but incredibly important in the chance age. That, and the, the, the one of the beauties of the 3.0 standard. So just so everybody knows what is going on here. Um, the, the, we are we are generating we are generating uh random numbers by starting with a spinner you always start with a spinner and the spinner runs through something called an f inverse model it says f inverse up here uh and, and in this case it is running through a metalog distribution that can mimic anything but so the, the the random the spinner was created by Doug Hubbard. This is one of the seeds to make sure you get a different sequence of spins for each job. So that the jobs are not 100% correlated. And and um, I don't know if this will work or not. Let, let's see if I can do this. I, I'm going to. Now I'm working without a net here. This model is very old. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to try doing a scatter plot of these two costs just to see. Uh, this is so. This is both job one. It's the same distribution, and do a scatter plot. If it works, it'll be cool. If it doesn't, uh, then didn't work. That's all right because this model yeah. is so old. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it did work. Okay, there's a chart of the first piece of pipe and the second kind of pipe. And what would happen if I gave these the same seed? Uh-oh, <laughs> wouldn't want to do that, right? They're perfectly correlated. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is all part of the whole probability management Shtick. This is why we have a chief probability officer. They got to be out there. When you're adding uncertainties, it's not like adding numbers. Mm. The statistical dependence or independence plays an incredibly important role when it comes down to things like likelihood of simultaneous failure and so on. So anyway, that that, are, that is our little uh, example. Uh, again, starting with um machine learning in this case 
just classification trees. And out of the machine learning, you can extract probability distributions. And I, 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 I think that we, I just think AI is going to be huge there. Now, um, I just, it, it doesn't mean it's not dangerous. I mean, I, I, have, I have to say, and now Alex, forgive me, I forget. I don't think we discussed this in front of your live audience yet. Did we discuss the things like, you know, AI is a force beyond our control, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea of regulating it is just ridiculous. You can't regulate forces. That's like regulating the weather. But what we can do is have like a weather service funded by the government to help warn us when things are going off the rails. Mm -hmm. right? And it would, I'm sure they would use AI like crazy to check up on the other AIs. But, yeah, you know, exactly. Because it isn't that I don't think it's dangerous. It's it's just that the horses left the barn so long ago. I presume that your well, first of all, Alan Turing in 1950 warned us that conceivably machines could be could imitate humans, right? And then in 1968, the uh, Space Odyssey movie by Stanley Kubrick. If no one has seen it, is it is amazing. There is a computer called HAL. HAL, why HAL? Because it's the letters IBM shifted by one. Little trick mm -hmm. that. So they're on this space mission and HAL decides to take over the mission. And there's a very tense scene where you don't know whether the humans are going to be able to disable HAL in time. Well, that was 1968. So humans have had plenty of time to think about this. There's one other thing, Alex, that does not surprise me in the slightest. There, there is something called random graph theory mm -hmm. that predicts how things connect. So AI has to do with connecting different pieces of, of information and data. And random graph theory, like from 20, 30 years ago, maybe longer, said, look, if you connect things randomly, then there's a critical tipping point threshold at which suddenly everything is connected to everything else. Right Now, the probability is not 100% that that happens, but it goes from like, you know, 0. 0.00001 to 0. 0.99999 in an eye blink as the connections develop. So none of us should be surprised at this. I think a good indication that humans are not in a position to control this thing is that they've had all this time to do it and they haven't done it, you know? So anyway, um, such an amazing subject. It, it, it is indeed. And uh, they, I think the, speaking of Space Odyssey, the, the, the best book on, AI taking over and making its own decisions that I read was uh, Dan Brown's Origin, which was his uh, latest latest book came out um, a couple of years ago, and it didn't it didn't really make a splash, which I was very surprised because it was kind of it was I, I remember writing about that saying this is probably the best fiction book for risk managers. And um, it just didn't resonate. I, I was I was surprised, uh, but the this is the book that I'm reading at the moment. Uh, ah. Right now, the Black Swan problem. I'm in the middle of it, and um, it's probably it's probably kind of the best practical implementation ideas uh, book that I've come across this year, uh, at least. Interesting. Um, as uh, in, like, it, it talks about specific risk management concepts like hedging, insurance, uh, sure. tail, tail risk, uh, risk capital. Um, so, not 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 kind of ideas and theories, but more very specific kind of actual I don't know practicalities of being a CRO. So but, anyway, but those are the things. Use. You know, I mean, you, you you'll talk to people who don't get that, right? And that's that's horrible. 
Um, hold on, let me get bring up my, the book I'm reading right now, which also relates to this. Mm-hmm. Um, what what book are you reading? Uh, I am the, reading. The person the person watching us, uh, send us a comment. Oh, yeah. What book are you reading right now? While Sam searches, um, let me know when you want me to share the screen. Yeah, I, I I've got mine up. So it's the Chaos Machine by uh, Max Fisher, nice. and um, it's it's quite new as well. Yes, yes. So the inside story of how social media rewired our minds and our world. So there are some hugely damaging things that the algorithms within Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and so on have have done. I mean, the, the, the UN blames the Rohingya genocide pretty much on Facebook. And mm. it probably wouldn't have happened without 25,000 people died, 700,000 were displaced. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty harmful stuff. And, yeah. but that doesn't mean, <laughs> but it's, but the, the horses have left the barn, folks. So, I mean, we must embrace it and learn about it and incorporate it into our, our thinking and, and, and make, um, I think we can only fight AI with AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's uh, it certainly is quicker and uh, has better memory than all of us. <laughs> yeah, but there's another thing to think about as well. You know, human a human lives at most about a hundred years, and probably the last and you know the first ten years, the last ten years probably are not, you know, that yeah. productive. Um, but how long will the AI live? Oh, forever. <laughs> so all you have. If, if AI had any intelligence at all, right? I mean, you could argue, well, you can't argue that anymore, really. But I mean, decades ago, I was saying, well, all it has to do is be like minutely smarter than a doornail, but it's going to live forever. So it'll become infinitely smart. Mm. Um, and, you know, uh, so, so here's sort of a question. Um, oh my gosh, it's going to take our jobs away. You know, in, in the U.S., the, the 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 screenwriters guild is striking in Hollywood, right? Um, yes, it will take our jobs away. But that means, but you don't have to feed AIs, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And and you know, so it means the role. For, and I think um, Andrew Yang. The guy who ran for president a few years ago, right? I think he suggested this: that okay, if humans don't have to work anymore, right? Um, then, uh, well, then the government. But but we got lots of wealth because all these AIs are doing all the work for us and growing the food and AI tractors driving the all that stuff. So everyone gets like a basic minimum income. Right. And we sit around, uh, I don't know, eating, drinking and being merry. You know, I mean, that's what humans do. Right. In my generation, the, the motto was sex, drugs and rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, eat your hearts out, chatbot, or not your hearts, eat your neural networks out. They can't do that. Um, yeah. uh, but but I mean, uh, the, the, there are humongous issues. Um and I realize, Alex, we must not talk before the show because, again, I forget. Did did, did did we discuss the the factory of the future with, with your audience, or was that just you and me before? Yeah, no, no, we did, we did discuss. Good, okay, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I still have my memory, but I just don't remember where the conversation had occurred. <laughs> That's um, all right. Uh, Jerome just wrote that he's reading uh, Gerrit Gigerinz's uh, last latest book. Um, how to stay smart in the smart world. Um, I, I've, I've read it. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it. I I, I enjoyed it slightly less than his Risk Savvy um, uh, Risk Savvy book. But yeah, it, it was a good but, read. But I don't see, I don't, I don't see AI replacing humans, but we've got to deal with each other now, right? Uh, um, I, I have found, for example, um, 
the AI having very poor judgment about stuff and, and, and then being polluted, as we said, by dealing with mere humans, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, where, where does AI begin? When I was young, cars had oil pressure gauges. Well, no one knew how to read them. And then at some point they came on with a warning light. Well, that was AI, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what what crashed the 737 Max? That was AI. So so it, it, even it's it doesn't even um it's not even a well-defined concept, I don't I don't think. Chat GPT is chatbots are because you type in something and you get something right out. But I mean, uh, oh, yeah. th th this is very interesting. I, um, Nor Norman says hi. Hey, yes, Norman, how, how are you? Good to, good to see you again, virtually. Um, uh, so um, I ran into someone, they had made a donation to the nonprofit and I said, well, that's interesting. Talked with a guy, he was a computer scientist working for a company called, I think it's a blue prism, P R I S M, mm -hmm. which they're a British company, but now bought by some other company. I don't know the whole structure or anything, but they're, they're in the business of creating AI to replace knowledge workers. Right. What kind of knowledge workers? Yeah. I don't know. Airplane pilots? No, he didn't say it. I mean, but you can imagine just tons and tons of jobs that soon will be able to be done uh, by an AI. And very shortly, like, like you use the, you use an AI art thing to create the little, the little octopus there, right? Was that an octopus? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I told it to be. I said, yeah, yeah. Um, write a, a chatbot which looks like an octopus. Great. And by the way, where did the octopus come from with, with Risk Academy? What is the uh, so, so I have the official story, but the, but the actual story is I, I asked my wife and she said, octopus is great. <laughs> And that's how it became an octopus. But there's like yeah. a whole story behind the octopus, how it it can blend in into the surroundings. And that's what risk analysis should be. It becomes invisible part of decision making. Oh, interesting. And it integrates yeah. into processes. And yeah. we it kind of it it, it goes into different going everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. different decisions, different risk analysis methodologies. Yeah. So like there's yeah. the whole story behind it. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. And by the way, so when I went skiing the other day with my with Connor McLemore, you I think you you know who he is. Yeah. Um, it's funny. He was saying, I forget they were in Hawaii or someplace, or, or, and, and and he saw an octopus in a tidal in a tide pool, and he walked up and looked at it, and it just instantly disappeared. <laughs> it just turned the color of the background. Yeah, kaboom. Uh, so I'd forgotten about that aspect of the of the octopus. Um, well, all exciting stuff. And I, my, my, my thrust is going to be to have work, you know, investigate AI for finding probability distributions for us, because, you know, for example, this firm that is replacing knowledge workers, you can bet once you have a computer doing the work, then you can collect very complete statistics on their capabilities. And once you have that, you've got probability distributions of the uncertainty. Once you have that, you're a button press away from stochastic libraries that mm -hmm. can be used in chance informed decisions. Yeah. Totally. And, and I'm going to continue perfecting my AI chatbot that speaks, to it. Spe speaks my language and never Googles risk management. <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, fun as always, Alex. Thanks, Sam. And thanks, everyone. Um, 
Thanks, Jerome, for uh, for adding your uh, your last comment on the book. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Speak soon.